Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to talk about the conditional statement and three related statements to it. First, let's review what a conditional statement is. So a conditional statement is of the form if p then q, or we can use the notation with the arrow uh, if p then q is how we would also read that. p is called the hypothesis or the antecedent. q is called the conclusion or the consequent. So the three related statements are the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. And the interesting thing about all of these statements is all of the statements we're talking about here are conditional statements themselves. It's just if we have a conditional statement, there are three kind of corresponding statements to it. So let's talk about what they all are. So first we have our conditional statement in words, that's if P then Q, and then with the symbol, we would just put that arrow there. Next, we have the converse. The converse is when we switch the hypothesis with the conclusion. So it'd be if Q, then P, and then we would just switch the hypothesis and conclusion, so Q, then P. The inverse is when we negate P and Q. So if not P, then not Q, and the notation would be not P, then not Q. And lastly, the contrapositive, any ideas what it might be? It's when we do everything to the conditional. So we negate and we switch. The contrapositive is when we negate and we switch. So not Q, then not P. Okay, let's look at some examples of writing the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of a given conditional statement. I call this one, he said, she said. Abby Lou tells her boyfriend, if you cheat on me, then I'm leaving you. And we're going to assume for the sake of this that Abby Lou is absolutely telling the truth here. So this is a true statement. What is the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of the statement? And then also think if what Abby Lou says is true, is the converse also true? Is the inverse also true? And is the contrapositive also true? Before we get started with writing those three statements, let's just write what our simple statements are. So P is going to be right here. So it's going to be you cheat on me. We might want to make it past tense because that might make a little more sense here. You cheated on me. And Q would be I leave you. You could say I'm leaving you, right? You could keep it exactly as we see it here, but I think we want these statements to make as much sense as possible. So we'll kind of adapt them as we go. Okay, so what's the converse? Remember the converse is when we switch the hypothesis with the conclusion. So it would be P, Q, then P. So if I leave you or if I left you, then you cheated on me. If I leave you, then you cheated on me. So is that necessarily true? Abby Lou promises that if she gets cheated on, she's going to leave him. This is saying she left him. So does that necessarily imply that Abby Lou was cheated on? No, maybe there was another reason she left him. Maybe she got bored. I'm just kidding. That's not nice. <laughs> maybe something else happened. I don't know. It could be anything, but I don't think this is necessarily true. So we would say not necessarily true. It could be, right? But we don't know. Okay, how about the inverse? So the inverse is when we uh, negate P and Q. So this is not P, then not Q. So that would be, if you do not cheat on me, then I will not leave you. If you do not cheat on me, then I will not leave you. Is this one necessarily true? So this is the promise that she doesn't get cheated on. Does that necessarily guarantee that she's not going to leave him? Again, not necessarily, right? Maybe she finds some other reason. There might be something else that's holding her back. So this one's also not necessarily true. Okay, what about the contrapositive? So the contrapositive is not Q implies not P. So if she does not leave him, then he did not cheat on her. If I did not leave you, then you did not cheat on me. So is this one true? Well, she didn't leave. If she didn't leave, that means that he definitely didn't cheat on her. So this one is true. Yay, the contrapositive is true. We have something that's necessarily true. And so those would be the three statements and, you know, kind of whether they're true or not is up, up in the air, except for the contrapositive, which is definitely also true. Okay, looking at another example, what is the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of this statement? And then again, also think about whether they are true or false, assuming the given statement is true. So the given statement, if I study, then I will pass. So first let's identify P and Q. P is I study or I studied, right? We might need to change it depending on which we're talking about. And then Q is I pass, hooray, I pass. Okay, so there's P and Q. Go ahead, pause the video and try to come up with the converse, inverse, and contrapositive on your own and decide whether they are definitely 100% true or if not, then not necessarily true. Okay, 
for the converse. Okay, for the converse. So remember the converse? The converse is going to be of the form. It's when we switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. So it's Q, then P. So if I pass, then I studied. If I passed, then I studied. Is that definitely true? Not necessarily, right? You could have gotten a lucky break. Maybe the test was on things you already knew, or maybe it was just really easy. It was an uh, algebra test, and the only question on it is what's one plus one. So not necessarily true again. Converse is not necessarily true. It could be, right? Maybe you did pass and you studied, but it's not guaranteed to be true. Okay, then next we have the inverse. The inverse is when we negate the hypothesis and the conclusion. So not P, then not Q. So it'd be, I did not study. If I did not study, then I did not pass. If I did not study, then I will not pass. So remember what the original promise is. The original promise is if I study. This is saying I do not study. So this is a completely different thing because we don't study. So can we say what's gonna happen because you didn't do the promise initially? No, so we don't know. Maybe, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. We don't know. So this is also not necessarily true. Okay, and then what about the contrapositive? So remember the contrapositive, that's when we do everything. We negate and we switch them. So it's gonna be not Q, then not P. So if I did not pass, then I did not study. If I did not pass, then I did not study. Is that guaranteed to be true? This says if I studied, then I will pass. Here we're saying I didn't pass. Therefore, I didn't study. Is that gonna be true 100% of the time based on the fact that this is true? Yes, yes it is. This is true, again, also true. Interesting, so kind of the same situation as the first example where the converse and inverse might be true, but the contrapositive is true given that the conditional statement is true. Let's look at one more example. So what is the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of if it rains, then it pours? Pause the video, try to come up with the three statements and also whether they are necessarily true or not. Okay, how'd you do? First, let's start with P is it rains, or it, I'm gonna say it is raining, so that makes more sense to me. It is raining, and Q is it is pouring. And again, these can be adapted based on um, the, the way that the statement reads. We want it to make sense. And it's fine to say it rains and it pours. That's totally fine for P and Q. I'm just gonna modify them slightly. Okay, so first we have the converse. So the converse, that's when we switch Q and P. So if it pours, then it is raining, or if it is pouring, then it is raining. Is that guaranteed to be true? Can it be pouring but not raining? Yes, it can, right? Maybe it's pouring syrup, we don't know. But again, the statement not necessarily true. So I think we're certainly deciding that the converse doesn't necessarily have to be true if the conditional statement is true. The inverse, that's when we negate P, then negate Q. So if it is not raining, then it is not pouring. And again, this one is also not necessarily true uh, because for the same reason, just because it's not raining doesn't necessarily mean that it's not pouring. Okay, what about the contrapositive? That's when we flip and negate. So if it is not pouring, then it is not raining. So if this thing is not happening, then this is not happening. This one is true based on if the conditional statement that we're given is true. So I think we can confirm that the contrapositive is always true if the conditional statement is true, but what's the deal with the converse and inverse? Well, we're gonna create a massively large truth table to determine or to verify that a conditional statement is logically equivalent to the contrapositive statement. And again, what does it mean to be logically equivalent? That means that they have the same truth value on every single row. So let's check it out. We have P and Q. We're gonna need not P and not Q for all, for two of the, the three statements. Then we need our, or four statements. We need our conditional, the original. We need the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. So this is our, I'm just gonna label these. This is the conditional. This is the converse. This is the inverse. And this is the contrapositive. Okay, so first let's do our negations. This will be false, false, true, true. And this one's gonna alternate, false, true, false, true. Okay, so conditional statement P then Q. So this is true when P is false or Q is true. So here we have Q is true, so the conditional is true. 
True implying a false, that's no good for our conditional. False hypothesis is a true conditional. False hypothesis is a true conditional. The converse, if Q then P, so now we're looking reverse. If true then true is true. If false, that's good to go. If true then false, oops, that's no good. If false, we're good to go. The inverse, so we're looking at not P and not Q. So if false, good, that's a true conditional. If false, true conditional. If true, then false, that's no good. If true, then true, that one's good. And lastly, our contrapositive. So we're looking at not Q, then not P. So if false, great, that conditional is true. True implying false, that's no good. False implying, yep, that's good. And if true implying true is true. So checking these out, yep, I see here the conditional and the contrapositive are logically equivalent, right? Because we have the top line is true, then false, then true, then true. But also the converse and the inverse are logically equivalent to each other. Look at this, we have true and true, true and true, false and false, true and true. So a conditional is logically equivalent to the contrapositive and the converse is logically equivalent to the inverse. Meaning that if the converse is true, then the inverse is true. But if the converse is false, then the inverse is false. Okay, so just to summarize this, a conditional statement is logically equivalent to its contrapositive since they always have the same truth values. The converse and inverse are logically equivalent as well. This has been a video on introducing the related statements to a conditional. Thank you for